It's like a six, uh, almost six a.m. and this Cebu wet market, and we're gonna take a look how early people wake up here and uh, get about their things. So as you know, uh, Cebu is in uh, Sarawak, which is East Malaysia, and the reason why people get up early is not, you know, because they're really early really birds, but. Uh, um, this is the east side of Malaysia, so we get sunlight roughly about, I don't know, 40 minutes, 50 minutes ahead of uh, West Malaysia. Mm -hmm. so, fresh vegetables, fresh fruits. Mm. The hell looks so good. Start on um, the day. I mean, if you're working on the stars, which, uh, my grandma, you know, she was selling vegetables for uh, decades, I think. Uh, yeah, she would have to wake up at, I don't know, 4 a.m. It's pretty early, isn't it? Uh, but they finish off early as well, so. Essentially, you get. Um, yeah, essentially you get um, people finishing out the business at, I don't know, 9, I think, considered pretty late. And the other thing is, uh, you know, why so early is also because of the weather, right? So, just can imagine this is tropical climate, it's on the island of Borneo, so surrounded by rainforests, which means super humid. And when the sun shines, they really turn up the heat. So you can imagine, right? High humidity, high heat. That's almost like uh, being in a sauna. And that's what it is, right? So, you know, for to live with this kind of condition, you know, uh, it may not be too hot, right? 32 Celsius or something. Uh, but with the humidity, you feel like, I don't know, closer to 40. So people get up early. And you can see the sky is still starting to light up. And it's pretty big, isn't it? I mean, the population of this town is officially, this year, it's like projected at 280,000. Huge market. Yeah. Let's look at the produce. So cheap. So good. I can think of it. So, I don't know, is that like uh, 40 cents? 40 cents you guys, man. So, so much stuff, and uh, you probably just saw like, uh, as you can see, most of it is too close, so you probably see like. I don't know, maybe one third at most or one quarter. And there's another, you know, three to four times uh, more stores this you know. Yeah, and uh, I want you to take a look because uh, I want you to get an idea of uh, the location of this market. So, this is good guard, this beautiful sky lighting up. And uh, as you can see, the cost there was the church, or the best Catholic church. So, you know, uh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Well, like uh, most uh, towns in, uh, well, there's only, technically, I think there's only two cities, um, Kuching and Miri. And um, in terms of towns, there's a lot of towns in Sarawak, and uh, most of them are, as you might have guessed, is uh, along the riverside. Right, why is that? Because uh, all this used to be dense forest, and in fact, um, you know, Sarawak is home to the Rajang River, which is uh, one of the longest um, rivers in the world. Right, um, yeah, so, so, you know, water was the main transportation mode for a lot of people here. And, you know, it's not only here, here is a little bit closer to like the downstream portion, 
uh, Cebu is strategically located as sort of like a, you know, uh, at a junction where kind of like the river branches off. So yeah, it tends to be like a natural hub of sort. But if you go upstream, uh, I guess yeah, I always think one of those that's good. So we're just walking and um, and we're walking to the ferry terminal. So I want to show you how close it is to the river and uh, of course it makes a lot of sense that the market is there because you know it has to be close to the river. Uh, in fact um, it was a town called Muka. Well it's one of the village town but uh, one of the town planners decided to locate relocate the wet market away from the river it didn't really work out and you guess that why right like no no one is uh <laughs> really gonna walk like half an hour to deliver their you know vegetable and goods and stuff um you know they want it to be convenient and this is probably like i don't know uh, less than five minutes walk yeah so this the this is like a ferry terminal or they call it a uh, river express but the thing about River Express is that um, recently, right, with uh, you know all this logging, obviously logging is a major, major industry in uh, Cebu. But since they're logging upriver, what has happened really is like uh, there's been just generally more wash off, and uh, over time, this river is uh, yeah has a uh, you know sediment, right? So when you have sediment the water depth uh, decreases and yeah and you know the water has to go somewhere and uh, unfortunately that also means that more frequent floods right and because this town is built on sort of like uh, you know sort of like a river bank which means like you know uh, the ground is soft in fact in some places you can go down like 130 feet right before you know <laughs> you find anything and that's further inland so you can imagine here right so literally it's on a really really soft ground and uh so what happens is uh construction costs in this town is expensive uh you'll find that a lot of houses here are actually priced not too much different than you know like a major city in west malaysia uh you know even Johor Bahru is next to Singapore uh, one of the most expensive or the most expensive city in the world you know? so so yeah, it's uh, you know, uh, yeah, you need to put a lot of money in because uh, the substructure, and yeah, it's something that people don't see. It's a, it's a really nice like uh, traditional, I don't know, speedboat, express boat. That's really useful going upriver. Because upriver, the the rivers obviously get smaller and uh, there could be rocks and you know you want to be you know uh, as light as possible going up there. Um, yeah, that's like a tugboat. Um, now, unfortunately, going back to the story of the river, um, unfortunately, larger vessels can't come through anymore. So there is kind of like a port nearby, and and the thing is, uh, they can't come up anymore. You know, so so we're using a, another port called Tanjung Mani, which is I think it's uh, an hour an hour and a half away. So goods can't come directly to this port and that's uh, somewhat affected commerce obviously and uh, also there's another town called Bintulu where you know uh, it's deep port so it's better a place to serve the oil and gas industry and we just had so much oil and gas discovery over the last 10 years so of course uh, I suspect that the national oil company Petronas actually you know kept, kept a lid on some of the discoveries and yeah they didn't want to find out us to find out that uh, we have so much more gas or else you know what's the point of being in Malaysia and giving up what 95% of uh, what we've got to do something to right yeah might as well we have our own country and I think um, yeah we can do it you know like in terms of land mass where in fact uh, just the state of Sarawak not including like our northern state Sabah which is a beautiful place uh, you know, fantastic beaches, great diving sites, like world famous, and you know, fantastic uh, mountains. But uh, just our alone is actually larger than uh, West Malaysia. Can you believe it or not? The entire West Malaysia, with, uh, I don't know, 
is that you know, the states there and some federal territories like um, the city of Kuala Lumpur. So, yeah, so this the. Hmm. So, this is also why that uh, there is kind of like a independence movement, I would say. Uh, maybe it's not realistic at this point, but um, yeah, we do have a, you know, a lot of people that feel like, you know, hey, we, we should be our own separate country. And that goes back in history, you know, like prior to the formation of Malaysia, we weren't really part of the story. And there's a lot of things that irks us uh, in West Malaysia, for example, you know, uh, for example, I think they right there. Mm, that's it. There's a lot of uh, racist uh, kind of a uh, movement, you know. And uh, man, we're, we're not up for that, man. And the other thing worth noting is that um, the original inhabitants of Cebu actually, you know, of course, are, are the native people. Uh, then uh, later on, in order to develop the economy, we had a you know, we were under a white Raja, so it's the Brook family. And they invited uh, Chinese immigrants from China. And I think they generally came from the Fujian province, but um, but Cebu is really heavily influenced by a migration from a city called Fuzhou, just right opposite Taiwan. And a lot of original people that landed uh, was essentially Christian missionaries. Right? Um, so yeah, so we, we have a quite a interesting uh, history here in Nasibu. You know, uh, you'd be surprised, but you know, a lot of people speak English, and I think that's also part of the reason why. You know, for us who are more like English educated, like we just ended up, you know, working elsewhere, and you know, because yeah, there's just more opportunities outside. You know. Um, yeah, that's the famous Tope Kong. Tope Kong is, uh, uh, I would say a deity, or is that a uh, deity, maybe? Uh, but essentially, we Chinese pray to, you know, like, yeah, gods. Maybe not gods per se, but uh, yeah, we, we do worship uh, quite a number of gods, you know, uh, unlike some of the, you know, like uh, Judaism or Islam or for Christians, we, we do worship a lot of gods, so a little bit more like uh, Hindu, uh, yeah, Buddhist. Uh, but there is a lot, right? and this uh, Tope Kong is one of the gods uh, that you can get real worship. Right? So I heard that's been around 200 years, right? So I don't know whether it's originally built like this, or you know, or did they improve it over time? Yeah, it's beautiful, just sitting on the the riverside of uh, Rajang River. Yeah, so that's um, that's interestingly the tallest building in Sarawak. I know we're like, you know, it's not really that tall, uh, but it is the tallest for the moment. I expect to see taller buildings uh, eventually, but then again, tall buildings. Uh, it, it is very costly and uh, what you end up with is uh, very high maintenance and also very high rental so normally they don't get rented out fully so I think it's a waste of money like literally I would rather see like I don't know five tall buildings instead of like one tall building mm -hmm. which is um, you know more, more like Singapore's policy anyway um, I'm gonna take you down here uh, to the dock and this used to be filled with like these express boats, right? Except uh, like, yeah, th those aren't express boats. So these are another type of ships, uh, sorry, vessels or boats where um, they travel along the river um, and they basically are, you know, convenience stores on water. That's what they are. Yeah, so that's also a big part of the, the story. And uh, my grandpa used to operate one back in the day. I think both grandpas, I think, yeah. But, you know, it's like things can go wrong when, you know, all your stuff is on water, right? Uh, you know, boats can sink and, you know, it takes a uh, few travel from place to place. You know? But uh, back in the day, when it wasn't so developed, this was kind of like the only choice. And here, um, yeah, used to be like loads of like really long, uh, you know, what we call express boats. 
they could be something like I think um, I don't know 50 foot long or probably longer no probably longer maybe 70 80 foot so Oda is gone uh, really could have passed now uh, see far off in the distance you can see what's that that's a tongkang right that's a just a barge right and yeah the good thing is barges can still get uh, up and down the river and uh, and they transport stuff right so you know there, there's still a lot of timber camps like you know like timber is generally still a big industry but you do see like a lot of people just uh well a lot of these companies just uh, adjusting to the to the conditions and and what they do is uh they're in the palm oil business now yeah so you know that's tricky as well i think malaysia as a whole is one of the largest uh palm oil exporters but um we had a problem with the eu you know they said that yeah you know palm oil was, uh, wasn't exactly environmentally friendly of course there's a certain degree of uh, environmental destruction going on um and you know that became a big issue i think for a year or two and um and china stepped in and said like hey we'll take you know everything that the eu doesn't want but probably at a cheaper price right but um but we gotta survive somehow you know and uh that's the way it is so for anyone complaining about china's influence in this region like don't even start you know like uh I think when the when the Western world starts thinking about you know third world countries in terms of like you know economic opportunities and development and like seriously putting their the, the money where the mouth is and really st start caring about people then uh, then we can talk yeah but for now um, don't be surprised uh, Chinese influence is is uh, very strong yeah so yeah this is uh, I think the, the water gate right to control the flow out to the river. I think that's important. Yeah, I mean, first off, you don't want junk flowing out. Uh, second off, I think it's uh, good for flood control. This is going to be a big deal here. So going back to what I said about, you know, the ground here is generally soft and uh, there's, um, you know, buildings are experiencing some, uh, some form of uh, settlement. And also like, you know, the river is shallower and when the river is shallow, then, you know, water tends to spill out, right? So there, there was a environmental report that, uh, I'm not sure whether it's public or not, but it did say something like, I don't know, this town is only gonna last until like 2035 or 2040, something like that, right? So don't quote me on it, but, um, but this is kind of like, uh, a big deal, right? Um, such a big deal that uh, even the Premier of Sarawak, um, Abang Zhou, he mentioned that, look, you know, if you want to solve this problem, it's uh, going to take a lot of money, uh, but he's going to try because this is, you know, even the 280,000 population is one of the largest uh, towns in Sarawak, so. And we're not a big country. Um, I think our population officially is maybe at two and a half million, uh, but it doesn't feel like that just because so so many of us are like you know elsewhere working, right? Trying to trying to you know support our families, and yeah, and so many of us have uh, migrated as well. You know, Australia, New Zealand. I think these are the two popular spots, and uh, obviously like you know West Malaysia and uh, Singapore. Yeah, here's a closer look at the at this uh, temple called Kote Kote Kote. Yeah, it's one of the things I like about uh, Cebu. It's, uh, it's really cute, you know, like... Uh, I, mean, I, I, need, I don't understand now why I need a car to get around, but... Um, like, to be honest, this is the first time that I'm actually, you know, walk from home all the way up to town and taking this video for you guys so yeah so uh yeah very 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 special town I think. As, as you see it's coming coming to life right it's uh it's already bright uh we're probably at i don't know six o'clock just past six o'clock six ten a.m 
can still see the moon. It's not uh, quite disappeared yet. And we were just talking about the port, right? Which is uh, actually just up ahead. So, so I'm gonna walk in and show you guys. Probably you can't see much, because uh, as you know, like most of these ports, like they're just fenced off. But, uh, there really isn't any great use. Um, I guess we can see the crane. So that's one of the crane. Um, you know, I guess from the looks of it, you can guess that um, you know it, it's not handling uh, any shipment now, and certainly like at the very peak, uh, it wasn't handling that much shipment as well. Or else we'll have a different type of crane, right? So this this one there, that's two there, that's three there. So okay, cool. All right, so um, yeah, so that's it. That's the port. Uh, it's empty, and I'm not sure if uh, someone des decided to make a better use of the space. But uh, I, I guess that could easily be like something else, right? Like a like a food court or something. Um, this used to be you know, all sports. Yeah, we, we have uh, quite a lot of Methodists here. It's uh, quite an unusual thing. Uh, I think there's several like towns in uh, Malaysia that have a uh, majority of Methodists, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of Methodists here, and uh, I think um, you know, Methodists are really cool. Like, personally, you like I, I've uh, stepped in and joined the mass when was it? A couple of years ago. But anyway, I, I like the way they, they do things, I like the way they organized things and uh, as you can see you know there's yeah this is a really pretty church like um, you know a lot of donations went into it a lot of investment kind of like you know and just in general like a lot of care has been put into you know building this place and this was the original building and all this was like an extension like I, I didn't even know when they did it but uh, it's beautiful it's beautiful an ultimate background with, uh, you know, this my son, yeah, this uh, college student as well. I, I noticed some uh, college buildings uh, nowadays, uh, you know, they're going up all over Sarawak, uh, just not in Cebu so much, but um, in Kuching and Bitulu, I just thought that uh, I saw a couple of buildings that were uh, pretty, pretty tall. Yeah, like they're probably not the tallest, but um, yeah, I mean, things are changing. Um, you know, Borneo in general is really like, uh, Borneo in general, I think. Um, yeah, it's a bit behind the curve, you know. Um, the whole history of Sarawak is really, you know, when the British uh, were, you know, when it was apparent that the British uh, Empire would, uh, you know, uh, be entered into a sunset phase. Um, you know, the British started planning, right? And one of the things they planned, you know, for the managing the economy, the, the folk going into this colony, plus uh, Sarawak, which is uh, rather strange, right? It was kind of like owned by the British merchant, but anyway, uh, it fell under British control, and then they came out with a plan to essentially form, you know, this uh, Malaysia kind of uh, so called federation of Malaysia. So, Federation is really like the name implies. So Federation is really, you know, a group of, um, you know, distinct independent nations that have uh, decided to come together and form like uh, this Federation, right? And because of Federation, uh, I think there's a notion of decentralization in it. And, and, you know, so the reason that, you know, a central or federal government was formed, I mean, it's not even called central government, right? A federal government was formed so that you know there's this uh kind of like a centralized uh, governance entity that would you know sort of serve like all the different territories under it right so um so i think that has uh somewhat uh lost its meaning um and i think it was a deliberate attempt to really 
you know, by some parties, which uh, I won't mention, but um, they really had their own agenda. And basically what they tried to do is they tried to steal everything from themselves, right? So, so now we realize all this and we're kind of, uh, you know, in the process of uh, making a point. But yeah, for, for those years, um, mainly it was just uh, the federal government. Um, I won't say really say the West, but uh, there were a lot of politicians uh, in the West that's controlling the uh, federal government. Um, and they essentially just took a lot of resource off us, took our oil, took our gas, took our timber, like you name it, right? And sort of like never really invested. But that wasn't like the full story. There, there was a bit of corruption in the state government here, but combined, like that was legal, man. That, that literally meant like, uh, we fell behind like 20, 30 years behind uh, West Malaysia. And that's unacceptable. Like anyone tell you that's unacceptable, especially when, if we didn't join Malaysia right, and form this, you know, country, I think West Malaysia would have been broke, like dead ass broke. It would have been like, uh, a third world country on the footsteps of Singapore. And we joined um, because at that time, there was a politician called uh, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, which is obviously, as you know, uh, Prime Minister, ex-Prime Minister of Singapore. Uh, and he convinced us to join, you know, and uh, it was such a bad deal because uh, after a few years, uh, Singapore left and uh, we're kind of like just stuck with this, uh, you know, really abusive uh, partner. Yeah, so now we get there, the sky is lighting up. Uh, it's still pretty cool, uh, even though I'm starting to sweat from uh, all the walking. But you can see the like the birds on the trees, right? That's, that's how many birds they are, man. That's crazy, you know, like, uh, there's all nature here. There, you know, really is that, like, a lot of industries that's uh, turning out, like, you know, polluting smoke and stuff. Uh, there isn't a lot of traffic, there isn't a lot of dust in the air, it's just a uh, just beautiful, pristine uh, environment we're in. So, yeah, and, uh, and this is, uh, uh, yeah, so, so what we did is uh, we just went around some buildings to the other part of the port. So this the other part of the port. Oh, okay, okay, we, we did say some, uh, some of those uh, Okay, so they are right. So, so I was mistaken. I thought I thought those three planes were the only ones. But okay, this thing here, and this is the building that's shaped like a, apparently uh, like a boat, like a, like a vessel, right? Like a ship. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the port authority over there. Yeah, it's just too bad, you know. Like uh, like what happened to this place? I'm pretty sure they can find somebody utility for it at some point. Yeah, so, um, okay, let me see, okay, I'm trying to get you a good view, so you need to walk for a bit, bear with me. So unfortunately, this is like the story of Sarawak, and, uh, but there's a big comeback story. Uh, if you guys haven't been here, I recommend you to make a trip. Uh, if you don't have too much time, probably Kuching will be a good city to visit. Maybe for a couple of days, you know, even two or three days is like, like you feel it like, yeah, probably not on the first day you get in, uh, but definitely like, you know, spend a night here and the next day, like you'll feel much more relaxed and chill and uh, like you get a feel of like the local pace here, you know, like people are really chill, it's really relaxed and, and um, I think in general, time just passes by a bit more. Uh, slowly here. Okay, so this is the view that I want to uh, show you guys. So, that's uh, Wisman Sanyan. Yeah, it's a beautiful building. And we have like, uh, yeah, like a large field in front of it. Um, there are like, you know, base jump, I don't know, events happening. So people jumping off and kind of like um, parachute down those are big, big events. Uh, that's uh, a hotel, that's called RH Hotel, uh, RH stands for the Hotel, which is uh, one of the largest uh, timber companies in the world, but I guess they're like a conglomerate, right? So they're into like uh, not only timber, but I guess uh, palm oil, construction, 
point gas, like you name it, right? So, yeah, apparently uh, the, the Tiong family is really good seafood. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, it's not the roundabout. Okay, I'm gonna make my way across. Surprisingly, there's still some traffic going to the port, so I could be wrong. It could be, you know, still be being utilized and not be close. Like I said, um, yeah. and, I, and I guess it's you know, one more landmark that I'm gonna show you guys. There isn't there isn't that many. It's not really a big town, but I think this would just. Uh, you know, complete the picture. Okay, so uh, one thing about Cebu is that we have a lot of cafes, right? Like, I don't know. I mean, uh, I think what happened was uh, during the pandemic, uh, a lot of people came back, you know, obviously like, you know, the economy was closed, right? There wasn't much you could do. That's their 7-Eleven. And uh, yeah, a lot of people came back, you know, and. You know, having worked in all these industries and you know businesses, uh, you know, taking all these jobs, I think there was a lot of ideas that people brought back here. Well, here's another cool view. So yeah, so I think that's why we have a lot of cafes. Um, but unfortunately, when the uh, pandemic was over after a year, I think people start going out again. And yeah, I mean, there's a lot of cafes for like population of Cebu that's what I wanted to say and these are really like really nice places really nice food um, I think in general they're not expensive at all so um, yeah it's, it's a pretty nice place to live right yeah and this is the last bit so I'm, I'm gonna finish the video right after this so this is the hospital in fact this whole area used to be like the Cebu hospital how big it is uh, if you look from the map this is like the the pointy end of uh, that field there right so goes all the way down here this used to be the hospital they have preserved like the main building uh, I still remember when I was a kid when I was sick and uh, uh, I was treated here you know um, and they've kept this part um, like people here are a bit superstitious so <laughs> For, for actually quite some time, uh, there's a lot of people just uh, kind of like refused to, to come in here. Because uh, I can't remember where the morgue was. I, I think it's just behind there. And kind of like people said like, hey, you know, there's like uh, paranormal stuff going on. There's like ghosts and stuff. And uh, <laughs> uh, I won't get into that. Like, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I just heard what people say and I just like followed suit. So I was guilty as well. Um, but now it's really a peaceful place, you know. See the lily pads there. It's beautiful. I'm not sure there's any frogs there, but uh, it's a museum, by the way. And uh, I, I think at some point I, I should like, uh, yeah, gather up some, uh, you know, muster up some courage and uh, step in there. Yeah, and uh, start appreciating history. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I've uh, brought you guys through the market and you know, through a bit of the town, I think the more historic part of the town. Uh, it's been really cool to share this with you guys because um, I think early morning is where, like, you know, where it's like the unique part of life here in Cebu happens, you know. So I wanted you guys to see that. Obviously, even if you like visit in Cebu, uh, visit Cebu, like most people don't wake up at like 5.30 in the morning, right? <laughs> So, so, and I don't either, right? It's like, probably like, this is the first time I'm doing this in, I don't know, 10 years or something. But, but I, I think it's really important. I think it's, uh, you know, sets the town apart from other places in Sarawak and, uh, you know, you can get a feel of uh, the town and the local culture and how life here generally is, you know. There's a gentleman taking an early morning walk. And uh, yeah, and there, there's a lot of, uh, you know, since uh, youngsters left, right? Normally they, they would, um, you know, there, there's a lot of old folks here. Uh, and and the thing is, uh, they're not all cooped up. Like there are some like old folks houses, but they're not all cooped up in the retirement houses where you have, um, 
you know, you have a kind of life where I think it's not to everyone's liking because obviously you have like the nurses and stuff, which is great, but sometimes, you know, there's like, you know, problems with like other people or like in general, like some of the nurses are not, you know, too kind and tend to be abusive. Um, so you see, a lot of old folks actually stay in their homes uh, and uh, uh, one of them is of, of course I have my mom and my aunt and my uncle and uh, and I think it's a, it's a great place for them because uh, you know it's technically like a I don't know how to say it like a, it's like one big retirement town I guess you know you know the pace is really slow and you know you got good things going on and you still have like a strong sense of community and you know so so that's what I wanted to yeah that's uh, the entire thing that I wanted to share with you guys. So I uh, hope you like this video. Uh, it's a totally unplanned video and uh, it's definitely not scripted, uh, but I hope you like it. And if you have any questions about uh, Cebu, uh, the town of Cebu in Sarawak, like drop it down in the comments below. And uh, yeah, and uh, definitely I look forward to, you know, a conversation with you and hopefully you guys will take an interest in uh, uh, the place I was born, my hometown. Thank you very much.